Let's break this down. I have with me uh, to look at the performance of the bank and, of course, all of these issues raised by the World Bank and, of course, affecting the Nigerian economy. Finance manager, JNCI, Yemisi Chola Uyigbadi. Yemisi, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you, Tolu. Thanks for having me once again here. Compliments of the season. Same to you. I must greet you. Uh, that, let, let's start this way. What your, this, this report, it's all-inclusive. A lot of aspects touched. Yeah. How did it come to you talking about assets of the bank? It said the bank are not really doing badly, but they need to monitor the assets. Yes. Um, whilst I agree with um, the quality of asset, that, um, quality of asset concerns that the World Bank has, we also realize that the only way for CBN to have acted on behalf of those banks was to bail them out. Because of the I mean, kind of um, economic situation that we are in now, we cannot afford to have a crisis of confidence more than what we currently have. So, in other, I mean, and you know when there is, um, if you have an issue in the banking sector, which generally everybody views as being, you know, when you go into the equity market, I mean, it's the one that is most active and all of that. When we now have that, there's going to be a lot of issues. That's why I believe the central bank had to come in and build those banks out. But one thing I quite agree with the World Bank on is we need to have time-bound recapitalization plans. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the banks might not make judicious use of the funds that have been availed to them. And we might find ourselves, or they might find themselves back in the situation where they were in before. So on that basis, I quite agree with the World Bank. Mm. So, I mean, we could still go round and round, like it's going round and round a circle. If we keep giving them funds, bailing them out, Without and there's no time limit, there's no time for them to recapitalize, then there is still a major problem. Definitely. But what about the reaction to subsidies? That's really touching. Because for me, I see that as a way for us to go. We need to encourage farming. We need to digitalize farming. And all of this has to do with funding. Yes. Now they are saying this could have an effect on the economy. So, I don't quite agree on this point. We know that for um, any economy to grow, you have to look at the areas where you have um, comparative, comparative advantage. advantage. Do you understand? Correct. And we have looked at it. And a nation that cannot afford to feed itself <laughs> is a nation heading for the doldrums. Mm. I quite agree with what the central bank is doing, what the government is doing. These institutions, these sectors, they need the funding, the subsidized funding. We know the rates, I mean, we know what the rates was like prior to now. Rates were in the 20% levels and all of that. But None of those institutions, the micro SMEs, the SMEs, and those are the base of any nation. They cannot afford to borrow money at those rates. And that was why the central bank had to subsidize them. And that is a very good one. And for once, the government or central bank is substituting production yes. and not consumption. So this is the way to, to go for us as a nation. Even when some say they are taking uh, the role of a development finance bank, but they are saying that that is part of their mandate. That is because if you realize that probably CBN is taking over some part of what the, I mean, the, the federal government should be doing, exactly. the fiscal and the monetary, monetary side, taking everything all together. Because we need, however, there's something I always tell my people, this is the direction we're going. It doesn't matter how we get there. We have a destination. If we're going in this direction, we're not getting there. We need to recalibrate recal and refocus and relaunch. But the most important thing is we must get to our destination. And I believe that is what the government is trying to do. Nigeria needs to get on its feet. And now, this report, um, it touched on the loan to deposit ratio. Yes, I wanted to go there too. Many say the bank, the central bank, is pushing commercial banks far too much. And uh, looking at the recent quotes and ATM charges, POS charges, and all of this moves, pushing the LDR, that's loan a deposit ratio, yeah. to about 70% yeah. in 2020, yeah. according to what we've heard from the Apex Bank. What are you expecting from the banks? <laughs> well, it's, it's a tough one for the banks, because if you look at their books, charges, exactly. it's, it's a good source of revenue. But now, that is out. What the CBN is trying to do is to build a, I mean, a credit system in the economy. If you get to America, everything, most of their things is built on credit. You want to travel, you can take it on credit. You want to go to school, you can take it on credit. Do you understand? You want to furnish your house, you can take it on credit. We don't have that here. Mm -hmm. And that is what the central bank is trying to do. Let us extend credit to the economy. And you realize that by having them do this, that is meet the loan to deposit ratio target, most banks have primarily 
drop their rates and they are now looking for I mean, customers that they normally would not want to go to because they are generally risk averse, they are now wooing them. And by the time you realize all the sectors of the economy, the micro SMEs, the SMEs, they are coming together, we would have a strong base mm -hmm. from which you can launch as a nation. It is not conventional, do you understand? But it is good. It is good for Nigeria. Mm. World Developing. Bank, they have their own um, criteria as to how things should be done. But this is Nigeria. So we have to do our own thing. We have to make it homegrown. That has always been my take. Well, I, I think that's a step in the, in, the, in the right direction. But of course, we should also be worried about some risk like. involved in this. So let us go back to what happened with the oil and gas, power sector investments. We know what the banks went through. And even at the moment, they are still bearing the brunt. Many banks are still feeling that. I know some banks, yeah. I'm not going to mention names. But now moving forward, are you sure all of this moves by the apex bank as good as it is you've said it yes we need to make it homegrown let's also look at the negatives what negatives do you foresee and how can we avoid all of these negatives so the negatives um might be that the banks now just go all out and start giving loans yes we need to meet this ldr how do we do it let's let's give our loans but you realize that some banks that didn't meet it the last time they got sanctioned and i even heard from some sources as on bank have said they don't necessarily have to meet it they would rather pay the fines wow <laughs> do you understand the negative aspect of this is that we could have a full-blown credit crisis on our hands. People have been given credits that they cannot pay back. Do you understand? But I also remember that the central bank put a caveat yeah. in the, um, the circular that I released when it was increasing the LDR from 60 to 65 percent. The banks should monitor their risks. You don't say because you've been given this target, you know, Johnson, you throw risk management out of the window. So we all, it, it all has to be managed. What the CBN is trying to do is make sure the banks go retail. Yeah, yeah. Go retail. Yeah. It didn't used to make be like this at all. Make it inclusive. Yes. Go retail. When you go, we have so many people that are on bank. When it is retail, we can have access. Everybody can have access to credit. Our money flows Inclusion. in the system inclusive growth yes. i think that, that that that's the main aim of all of this but we see how it all plays out now you touched something very importantly when we started this discussion talking about the central bank almost taking the role of the fiscal and the monetary side we've seen all that have happened all through the year from 14 percent after about how many years we're able to drop to 13.5 yeah. percent talking about npr and all of those moves as we move to the end of 2019 uh what would you what more would you expect from both sides now it's not an election year. We have ministers now. Everybody is at the work. We are seeing um, minister walks everywhere, a proportion of the express road, the one that leads to the port and all of that, Lagos Badagri. So what more do we expect from the fiscal side to help consolidate moves by the Apex Bank and the monetary side? Okay, so let's take it from the monetary yep. before we go to the fiscal side. Now, from the OMO um, restrictions, and we've seen the rates. Rates have been coming down. Rates are now about 4%. Mm. And if you look at the debt, Nigeria's debt, about 27 billion thereabout is external. We have a total of about 84 billion in debt. The balance is local. So what it means is that by the time the rates keep on coming down, the federal government can refinance this debt mm. at a lower rate. By the time you refinance at a lower rate, we all know what our um, debt service is like. Debt service is competing. You know, debt, se debt service as a percentage of revenue has been growing and growing and growing. In fact, from 2020 budget, debt service and capital expenditure, they're almost at almost a par. So if you're able to refinance at a lower rate, you can have some of the funds that have been saved and you have it and move it to other sectors of the economy. But the government now needs to be able to walk its talk. I was looking at the 2019 budget implementation and I realized that while some aspects of the budget have been fully utilized mm -hmm. and fully implemented, some were not even touched at all. Mm -hmm. There was a particular allocation that was to go to the health sector. Not one naira was released. Do you understand? So the government needs to, apart from just putting all those figures down, we, there has to be a commitment to implementing the budget to the letter. The way the budget is now, recurrent expenditure is like about 45%, capital expenditure is about 23%. If you can implement it to the letter, it's going to work, I mean, it's going to work better 
for our country. Well, it's still a welcome development as many analysts like you have agreed that um, even going back to the January, December budget circle yeah, is, good. is one good thing yes. for planning, yes. for implementation yes. and all of that. So uh, what, are, what are these things? When we talk about proper implementation, releasing of funds, letting people get to sites in good times, let contractors get to work, let the monies be released. Exactly. So, but why on earth? I think it still all goes back to revenue challenge which government also has. And we heard of the finance bill. We've heard of all of this that's trying to make government get more funds. But um, many are saying that uh, that's not like a drop of water in all of this <laughs> mighty ocean. So if you look at the 2020 budget, there was a shift from the 2019 budget. In 2019, all the other budgets, oil revenue has always been taking the major share. Wow, that's true. It was 51 percent, but this year, 2020 budget, it, it's about 30 percent. Mm -hmm. Because in 2019, all revenue fell short as usual, as it always does, by about 52 percent. Mm -hmm. But you realize that non-all revenue sources did about 90, 94 percent. And then there's this other sources of revenue. That one did about 104 percent. So what the federal government has done uh -huh. in 2020 budget is to make sure that we shift. You know, everybody has been talking about let's diversify our revenue sources, let's diversify our That's revenue base and all every, of that. Every, every business gathering so now, diversification is the word. That is what it appears the federal government wants to do. And you can see the finance bill has gone ahead to try and put some groundwork in place. CIT, VAT, and all of those things. Yes, we've always had a deficit. We have a deficit this year. But I believe that if, if there is policy consistency, the federal government is going to be able to make it work. Policy consistency. Yes. Let's round this up with the economic recovery and growth plan. It's been a while I discussed about this beautiful document. Many looked at this document as something that is also very good. Wow, beautiful document. Beautiful projections. Nigeria is going at this percent. We are still going at 2.28 percent. Yeah. The last figures coming in, and our population is going at 2.67. <laughs> so of course, one way or the other, slipping into poverty. So how do we blend all of this up as we move to 2020? Let's say now, what are what the things we expect from the fiscal so government enabling policies? What are the quick wins now? We know border, but the border remains closed, and the effect is on inflation, and we see that. It's going on and on, even on some manufacturers, while some are smiling to the bank. Oh so God. all of these policy issues, where do we really straighten it up? For it to work effectively, everything comes down to infrastructure. Yeah, that's and this is not something you can do overnight. Of course. Our Nigerians are not patient people. <laughs> it's not something you can do overnight. <laughs> do you understand? It boils down to infrastructure provide the enabling environment. So the central bank is doing that. Some certain sectors of the economy that have been identified, they are giving them loans, just at subsidized rate. If other sectors can be identified and you, have, you, you avail loans at subsidized rate to more of those sectors, it's going to help. But now, when this will have these loans, what happens to power? Mm. What happens to the roads? And these things take time. So what would happen is funds should be released on time the contractor should be mobilized to site as it went due, and then their payment should be made as it went due. No delays, everything right on point. And probably we can also, uh, I, I don't really know how it works in the ministries, but probably some of the bureaucratic bottlenecks can find a way of sidestepping them. If it was 10 process to get something done, probably you can look at streamlining the process and make it up to three. I, I, and I make think it the work vice faster. president was trying to do that at a particular time with regards to MSMEs, when there was an MSME clinic, where you have the SON, you have all the agencies involved, so that the issues are tackled right there. And it's not taken to an office again, and somebody's telling you the file is yeah, under the table and yeah. it's somewhere. I think that's just the way to go. Uh, yeah, it's great to have you. Oh, oh, just a, a, a parting shot. It, it, it's the end of the year. Even the market is... Well, I think the market is doing very well to close the year. So what are your expectations for 2020 straight up? <laughs> 2020, we're going to have high inflation. Mm. Yes, we, can't, we can't run away from that. Mm. Mm. We know that normally inflation is always impacted by prices. December price, everybody wants to buy this and all of that. And we also expect next year the um, salary increases will be implemented. So that's what definitely inflation is going to go up. Um, as regards GDP growth, we should grow mi marginally. We should grow marginally. And then interest rates will continue to tank. Hmm. Not tank or stabilize. Okay.
Finance manager JNCI, MEC Shalaw Yegbade. Thank you very much for spending your time with us. It's not really easy meeting appointments this time. A lot of commitments, yes. end of the year. Yes. Thank you so much Thank for you. joining us on business. Thanks for having so me. So we'll see uh, in January, right? Yes, we'll see in January. <laughs> All right, then.